Hey guys, so what we're going to do is today we're going to, we're going to learn how to uh, take an Excel file, basically load it into our PySimpleGlue program, and then just display that as a table, like so. So this Excel file, this data in this table is identical to what's in the Excel file right here, or the corresponding Excel file. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So first we're going to create a um, new file, main.py. And what we're going to do in this file is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to create this window right here where we can browse to and we can actually open up an Excel file um, and extract the data that will go into this table right here. So first we're going to do um, import pandas as pd. So that's actually a library that we're going to use in order to um, sort of get the data. So get the, initially get the data from the Excel file. Um, also, we actually just need to import PySimple GUI, which is really at the crux of this, um, enables everything. Um, we also need to import a library called NumPy, and this allows us, once we get the, once we actually open the Excel file, to turn it into an array format, which we can work with um, in terms of loading it into our um, table. Um, we're going to have import OS, and that should do it for now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our working directory. So that means the directory that we will be um, able to browse into. Um, and that's going to be the current directory that we're working in, PySimple GUI, Excel to um, tables. And we just do that by doing os.getcwd. Uh, this just means when we open our browse window, we go directly to the directory in which the application is located, in which these Python files are located. Um, next, we're going to create the layout for our apps, so basically create all of this UI stuff here. Um, so we're going to say layout equals um, sg.text, uh, choose an Excel file. Uh, next line is going to be, so that's our first line right here. Next line will be our uh, file browsing stuff. So we're going to create an input to hold the file path, dot input text, which can also be shown as input. Um, key equals file path. So basically what that's going to do is that's this text right here, and that's going to hold the file path of what we select when we open up our file browser. So we're going to have that, and then we're going to have, um, we're going to create a file browser. We're going to create like a file browse uh, UI element. So file browse, um, initial folder. So the folder we open up when we first click the browse button is going to be that. It's going to be this one. So what we specify in working directory. Um, let's just go ahead and just do that just to kind of make things clear. Um, so we've got working directory, and then we're going to specify the file types we want to work with. So this is going to be uh, what we call Excel files as denoted by anything that has a .xlsx extension. And that should basically do it. Yep, that's good to go. Um, okay, so now all of that goes in one line, our file browser and then the, uh, the text input that holds the address to whatever file we selected. Now we just need these buttons right here, our submit button, which will open up the table and then exit button. So we'll have in another array, sg.button submit, and then uh, sg.exit. And remember that uh, each of these, so this layout's gonna be in the form of a 2D array and each one of these individual arrays represents a different line in our UI. Um, next, we're gonna create our window object. So we'll say sg.window um, and then display. CSV and layout. Um, now we need to create our event loop. Again, if any of this isn't is pretty unclear, I'd recommend going back and looking at my intro to PySimple GUI series, which kind of explains all of these components in detail. This window that read um, next. And that's referring to this window right here. So actually, this would be window window equals sg.window. There we go. 
um, if event in sg.win close, we're just handling how to close this window. Um, break. And now we're actually going to deal with what happens when we click the submit button to open up this table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say elif event equals uh, submit, which matches this right here. Then we're going to get our Excel file. We're going to load it from the file path, the values uh, file path. And this corresponds to, um, this file path corresponds to whatever is in the white space. So that corresponds to this field right here. So we're going to get the, uh, basically just the address for the file. And then we're going to use pandas to create what's called a data frame object. So get that data and put it into a specific format. So we're going to say Excel file array. Um, actually, we can say Excel file data frame. DF is for data frame is pd.read Excel. And then uh, just Excel file. Well, maybe we'll call that file path just to be more specific. Then once we've done that, um, we want to take this and we want to turn it into an array. So we want to turn the headers, that is we want to turn this part um, just into a 1D array. We want to turn this part into a 2D array. Unfortunately, it's actually pretty easy to do that using um, uh, NumPy. So first we're going to do, we're using NumPy and, uh, and pandas. So we're going to get our headers. So that means we're going to get uh, this part right here by doing headers equals uh, Excel file array or Excel file. Ah, I'm terrible at typing. Uh, DF, so data frame, um, dot columns, dot to numpy. So numpy is just another library um, that is very often used in, in Python related data science tasks. And what this is doing is this is going to convert it to what's called an ND array. So it's an array of data in a specific form that's specific to this NumPy library. Basically, it extracts uh, these from our Excel file. That's the ultimate task um, in the form of a 1D array. And next, we're actually going to get our data. So we're going to say data array equals Excel file um, array dot to NumPy. Now what this is just get, getting is the pure quantitative data in our file. Actually, it should be Excel file DF. Um, so this is getting purely the quantitative data, such so as this stuff, and it's storing it in the form of a 2D array. Each of these rows corresponds to an array within the larger array. Now these are in the form of something like an ND array. Like if you did type, if you found, if you looked at the data type, it would be um, like something that looks like this. However, we need to turn that into a Python list so that it can be displayed in our table. Um, so what we're going to do, well, first of all, I want to create our file table.py. And right here, we're going to import, um, we'll say import PySimpleGUI as uh, sg. And then we're going to have a function def create table. Okay, and that's going to take in the actual data and then the headers. Or actually, let's just switch around the order. Headers and the data, okay? Um, so we're creating this in, in a different file and we're actually going to import that file into, actually not really even that file, but just this function. Um, so we're gonna say from uh, table, import create table. Okay, um, so now that we have this create table function, this create table function is going to ex accept the headers as a one dimensional array or one dimension, one dimensional Python list. And this one is going to accept the data as a two dimensional Python list or array, not an ND array, because that just wouldn't go into our uh, PySimple GUI table correctly. So we want to do create table, referring to this function in table.py. We want to do data or, or we want to do uh, headers dot two list. And then we want to do uh, data array, or sorry, yeah, data array dot to list. Okay. So now that we have both of these uh, lists 
here. Let's see why it's not working. Okay, did I right? So now that we have both of these here, we can go and finish off this, this uh, code by saying window.close. So when we do exit, we just break out of this event loop and we just go to window.close. Now let's focus on this create table function where we're actually going to generate this table right here. Um, so what we're going to do right here is we are going to start with, um, first I just want to print out the headers and this will show up in our terminal just to make sure that we have the right stuff. Um, and then I'm going to create the layout. I'm going to say contact. So remember in this, in this right here, we're essentially creating a window, a table window inside uh, a function right here, which is being kicked off right here from our event loop in our main window. So this right here is basically being kicked off from our um, main window right here. Um, and all the functionality for this table is going to live in this create table function. So now we're just going to simply, basically this is just creating a table using these headers and data, which is actually pretty standard. If you've seen uh, any of the other uh, tutorials involving tables. So we won't call it contact information. We'll call it, well, what kind of information do we have here? We've got, let's say grade information, right? So we'll say grade information, uh, lay, window layout. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have sg.table. We're gonna have another array right here. We're just really gonna have one element in this window and that's gonna be our table element, which is pretty substantial. Um, we'll have values. So all the data that's going into our table is going to be our data. And um, we'll have uh, headings. Well, let's rename this headings just to be consistent. Equals headings. We're gonna have a few other um, specifications like max column width. So this is the maximum a um, width a column can have equals 35. Um, auto size columns. So it's gonna increase up until a size of 35. Equals true. This is kind of just some standard like boilerplate just to, you know, make um, our table pretty justification right it means all the data is displayed on the right of the column so this is the whole column and it's displayed on the right here um should be a string i think yeah that's it it's gonna be a string um next we've got number of rows the maximum number of rows we can display is 10 and then we start scrolling now the key is going to be table don't think we're really going to use that but you never know you might want to build something else off of this Row height is going to be standardized at 35. Uh, that's not the way to do it, 35. And then we're going to have um, tooltip. So you kind of hover over it and you see, uh, we'll say grades table. Again, you probably, you'll probably never run into this, um, but eh, it's just some specification that may come in handy, some parameters that may come in handy. So now we're going to create the window right in here. So we've created this element right here in a 1D array, which goes into our 2D array. And that's the only element in our layout. So now we'll have grade information uh, window, actually create the window. That's going to be sg equals sg.window um, data grade, let's say grades table. Um, grade information window layout is going to be the next parameter, like basically our layout. And then modal equals true. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now just our final event loop, which is nothing special. And that's going to be event values equals grade information uh, window. It's basically this right here. Uh, very similar to how we did it in main.py. Again, most of this is just boilerplate at this point. Uh, we did most of the hard part right here, really. This is the crux of the tutorial. Um, and then we're going to have if event equals exit for event uh, equals sg.win closed. Then just break, break out of this event loop. And we are going to just close it up with uh, grade information window dot close. 
All right, cool. So let's go ahead and close this. This is just our, our display. And let's go ahead and let's try what we built here. Remember, troubleshooting is a big part of this tutorial. Let's hit play. Let's kind of close this up. All right, so this is going to take a second to kick off. We'll do browse. And okay. So actually, we don't have our Excel file in this specific directory. Let's go to another one right here. We'll choose this one. This is actually the, my demo directory. We'll do submit. Ooh, and it closed and we got an error. It says data frame object has no attribute column. Hmm, okay, line 25 right here. All right, so let's see what went wrong here. Probably just mistyped something. All right, so we have Excel file, DF. Um, let's go back here and see what happened. Okay. Excel file, D data frame. Oh, it's columns, not column. That's what the problem is. All right, cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and give that another try. Cool. Browse. Again, we're going to have to go to this other directory right here. Choose our Excel file. Submit. Ooh, we got another error right here. Uh, okay, problem finding your key grade information window. All right, let's see what we have right up here. So it's called grade information window. Um, oh, we got to do dot read. That was just a typo again. Okay, cool. All right, again, like, you know, these are things that are good to for me to show you because then if you run into the same error, then you know how to deal with it. So we're going to kill that application, exit out, run it again. Cool. All right, let's do browse. Okay, let's do submit right here. All right, we got our nice little table right here. Um, this one actually doesn't have our row numbers. Um, that's okay. So as you can see right here, we had this uh, print statement right here. Um, and what we actually have, what we can see right here is our as our headers in the form of a 1D array and the rest of our data in the form of a 2D array. Uh, anyways, this is actually pretty acceptable. Um, I'm not really sure what we have the row numbers in the other one, but anyways, you've got your headings. Um, you could always specify your row numbers separately if you really wanted to in your data. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can actually specify that in the table parameters. Um, anyways. If you found value in this tutorial, please remember to like and subscribe. Um, I hope this has been useful to you. Uh, have a nice day.